was pretty excited when I heard about One Night, a Paramount Plus television series from Australia. I have watched the series and guys, I have feelings. So firstly, I'm just going to give a brief summary of the show. Then I'm going to talk about what I liked, what I didn't like, and I will be sure to let you know when I'm getting to spoilery information. So the show is about three women who used to be really good friends when they were teenagers and drifted apart after a traumatic event that happened when they were 19. And each of them have carried the trauma forward in their own particular way. When Simone writes a book about the experience and publishes it without the consent of either of the two ladies, it causes all three of them to have to deal with what they didn't deal with at the time. So straight up, I need to give a warning about this show. There are a lot of triggers in it. First of all, SA. There is also eating disorders and a fair amount of violence hangs over the show. So just be warned if you're sensitive to these kinds of topics, it might not be something that you want to go ahead and watch. So first up, I want to talk about the cast. So we've got Jodie Whittaker who played the 13th Doctor. I was a fan of that particular era, well, of the relationship between 13 and Yaz. So I was pretty excited to see that Jodie Whittaker was going to play gay again and I thought, why not? She's probably realized just how fervent fans of the Suffolk community can be and why not lean into that? So hats off to you, Jodie. Then we've got Nicole De Silva, who you might recognize as Frankie from Wentworth. She played gay in that. Then we have Yael Stone, who was in Orange is the New Black, and she played as the love interest to Natasha Leone's character in the first couple of seasons. So I have to say, clearly the casting was very intentional. I am very curious to know how Jodie ended up on an Australian production. If any of you know, please let me know down in the comments. So in the show, she has a wife, she's got two kids, and she has just come back to Australia, Sydney, after having escaped after her SA. They haven't been in contact for something like 17 years at this point. None of them have really dealt with the fallout from that night. We've got Simone who has written this book about that night. It's clear from the way that she's talking that there were a lot of emotions going on between them at the time. Were they in love? Were they not in love? It's sort of teased out through the first few episodes and I won't say what that is because I don't want to spoil you. But there is a lovely tension that exists between these two characters that I found really interesting up front. Overall, I found the premise to be pretty strong, using the book as the kind of centerpiece to pivot the entire story around, I thought was a great way of bringing the past into the present. And from it, you get to explore the emotions that the girls were experiencing and are still experiencing today. The show was very much a meditation on the impact that trauma has on people's lives. And in that way, it delved very deeply into that and kind of lingered in there, which was both a good thing and a negative thing. And I'll tell you why I didn't like it so much later on. It certainly highlighted the change in narrative that we have as a society around consent and essay and how it's now dealt with. So I like those things about the show, but then I do have some criticisms and I'll keep these criticisms pretty general um, to begin with. And then I'll let you know when I get into spoilers. So I felt overall that the narrative was quite slow. It felt like I was being bogged down by just how heavy the story was and, and what they were trying to process. I felt by the end of it, like I really felt the, the heaviness and the burden of that experience. And I kind of wished that the narrative had provided a bit more movement within that, a bit more levity, a little bit more transmutation, if you will. I felt like I wanted a catharsis and I wasn't happy with the catharsis we were given. That's pretty vague. I'll explain a bit later what I mean by that. Through the series, we kept revisiting flashes and moments from the past, and they kept very slowly revealing each new moment. But instead of feeling full of tension and intrigue, it got frustrating and repetitive, like they were eking out a mystery that didn't really feel like a mystery. To try and sustain tension, the story tried to throw doubt on the events. Not that I thought the show would pull the rug out and say, you know, haha, this didn't happen after all, the girls are making it up. Given the leads didn't see or remember exactly what went down, there was this question mark over what they did remember for the rest of the episode and who was and wasn't involved in the assault. Even throwing this uncomfortable doubt on whether anything happened at all and it just sat ill with me. 
So I think I'm going to put the spoiler warning here because I'm about to discuss a couple of moments uh, specifically. What would I say in general? Should you go watch it if you have the stomach for this kind of narrative? Sure, go check it out. I, I think that it has some good elements in it and my criticisms may just simply be me and my response to the material, but I would be interested to hear what your thoughts are once you have watched it. We had the perp show up, he gets released from jail and uh, he sort of throws a bit of a spanner in the works, which was not a necessarily bad thing, but he is just so categorically awful. He was like a heavy black hole sucking in all the energy and I found him incredibly hard to watch. I mean, I guess congratulations to the actor for making me feel that way, but it was also pretty unpleasant to see him. And not that I wanted a redemption arc for the character. Him getting his just desserts didn't feel satisfying for some reason. So obviously him threatening Hat. I was watching this and I was just getting so tense. I kind of wanted to turn the TV off because the feeling it was giving inside of me was just unpleasant. I don't know that I want a TV show to affect me like this. And then when he turned his eye on Tessa's daughter, I was like, no, I just, oh, no. The fact that they were trying to, in a way, parallel Tess and parallel her daughter and the risk that her daughter was at being around this guy... I know that it's a very real threat for a lot of young women, but I guess I kind of wanted the, the trauma to be in the past and for it not to be pulled into the present. So I didn't enjoy that. I found that challenging to watch. And, and I guess overall, I found the show pretty unrelenting and grim. And I had this overall sensation with the story that it didn't quite hit the spot. Maybe because it leaned so heavily on these repeated flashbacks that ultimately revealed so little as a way to linger on the emotional trauma instead of going deep enough on the relationship, either in the past or the present, to flesh them out. Tessa's relationship with her mum, her wife, her daughter, as the person who was essayed, felt glossed over and as a consequence I felt Tess became a largely one-dimensional character hitting this you know, one traumatic note for a lot of the story. I don't feel Tess and Simone's relationship was properly resolved and it felt like it was set up as the emotional core of the show. Simone wrote this book as a kind of love letter. There were things to resolve between them, which is perhaps why I felt like the climax with the perp getting his comeuppance didn't work because that wasn't the catharsis that was needed. If you'd like to see more TV and film reviews, I have a playlist on your screen. And until next time, lady lovers.